welcome to Christmas Eve service on this snowy, snowy night. So good to see everyone. We are here to praise God as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Thank you, Anna, that was beautiful, beautiful. I invite you to stand, if you're able, for our call to worship. <clears throat> the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For to us a child is born, And the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Alleluia. Amen. Let's sing Joy to the World.
Please be seated. The Gospel of John 1, verses 1 through 5, 10 through 12, and 14. Receive the good news. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. On this most holy night, we light all four candles of the Advent wreath. We are reminded of the expectation, the preparation, the proclamation, and the revelation of his coming. Now, as we light the Christ candle, we rejoice that the promise of God has been fulfilled in the coming of the baby born in a manger. Let us pray. Glorious God, we rejoice and celebrate the birth of Jesus. Our salvation has come. May we live in his light forever. Amen. No matter what happens, the light is not extinguished. So, thank you. Let us pray. Almighty God, it is time to celebrate the good news. Your son, our savior, is born tonight. What a precious gift. He is a gift like no other, the greatest of all gifts. We stand in awe of your tremendous love for us. Jesus has come to set us free from our sins. He has come to teach us 
how to love you, O God, and how to reach out to our neighbors, wherever they are. Jesus, you have come to lead us through our hardships and pain into a place of healing filled with joy and peace. We are forever grateful, God, that you sent your one and only Son to earth for such a time as this. We give thanks, Jesus, for your presence in each of our lives, a presence that never fades and never grows weary. We grow weary and worn out, and it is uplifting to know you are all the strength we need. In times of doubt and darkness, shine your light on us, dear Lord. We give you all the glory. Bless each person and family here tonight with your love, hope, peace, and joy. In the name of our newborn King, we pray. Amen. We hear once again the Christmas story. May we hear it with New Year's, Luke 2. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Let us sing together. First verse of 218. And in that region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased.
Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? That child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby you kiss the face of god mary did you know When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Please join in singing, O Come All Ye Faithful, verses 1 and 6.
It's time to celebrate. In the past four weeks, we have waited with expectation for the fulfillment of God's promise to us. The prophet Jeremiah shared the promise with the Israelites. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the gracious promise I made to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line, and that branch is our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is our hope. And throughout this time, we have prepared for the coming Messiah. John the baptizer prepared the way for God to enter our lives in the flesh. We have begun to make the necessary changes to welcome him tonight, raising the valleys, lowering the hills, and smoothing out the rough places to make a straight path for Jesus to walk right into our hearts. Expectation, preparation, proclamation, for to us a child is born. Our hearts are forever filled with the joy of his coming. And then the revelation, the angel saying to the shepherds, today in the city of David, a savior has been born for you. He is Christ the Lord. That's the revelation. Tonight, God's promise to us is born. Now, we are so used to hearing these words of scripture that we sometimes forget the power of Christ's birth. And each Christmas, we have the opportunity and the privilege to renew our faith in the one who saves us. You know, all of this is simple yet profound. Jesus, the Messiah, Savior, and Lord, came to earth the same way we did. I don't imagine any of us was born in a stable, maybe other places, but not a stable, but who knows. You know, God could have appeared in the form of a Roman ruler or one of those nasty Roman soldiers, and we are ecstatic that our Savior entered the world as a crying, screaming baby. And that's the way God planned it. The name Jesus means the Lord saves. Jesus came for everyone, the rich and poor, the young and old, the tall and the short, the athletically and musically inclined, to name a few. No matter who we are, or what we do, Christ came for us. He came for the Virgin Mary and the bewildered Joseph, not to mention the lowly, frightened shepherds. The good news was first revealed to the shepherds, and they didn't keep it a secret. And that in itself is good news. The world was living in darkness, total spiritual darkness. And we read Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You know, the contrast between light and dark, I mean, we get that. It's easy to understand. It's, it's vivid. It's very vivid. In the first letter of John, in the first chapter, God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. And today we celebrate the light that's, that pierces the darkness in our lives. We, have living, we are living in a time of deep darkness. And when you stop to think about it, it seems unreal, yet it is very real and devastating. So as we cope with uncertainty, we need to remind ourselves that the light that is Christ obliterates the darkness. You know, like that first cup of coffee in the morning or whatever it is you need to wake up. I pray that Jesus fills you with hope every morning. We need a full dose of hope to see us through any darkness we experience through the day. In Christ, we find hope, love, peace, and joy. May each of us experience Jesus, the light of the world, in a new and exciting way this Christmas.
Amen. Emily and Bryce. The youth will be walking down the side aisles and um, lighting the en candles on the end, and please pass it down. Please stand for the singing of Silent Night.
The light that is Jesus Christ never grows dim, is never extinguished. As you leave this place, take his light with you into the world. Amen.